What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from Unsleeve Media, and we have to talk about proxies. Now, before we get into it, uh, people often ask me what my opinion is of proxies. And to me, I 100% support proxies if the backs of them are something different uh, or if they were gold bordered. When they look too much like the original card, I have to not support them. Does that mean if you buy them, you're a garbage person? No, of course not. I don't believe so. If you buy them with the sole intent of injecting counterfeit cards into the system or to rip off local game stores or try to move at a Grand Prix, yes, you are a garbage person. And the problem is with proxies is as they become more available, and I'm going to show you now uh, how the market has just exploded uh, in terms of Chinese counterfeits, uh, they're going to get in the system. Uh, whether intentionally or unintentionally, more and more of these proxies are getting into the system, making it hard to know whether or not some of these high-priced vintage and legacy staples are real. But over the recent years, uh, it's gotten so bad that people are proxying just modern staples because it's so cheap that things like shock lands and fetch lands and like $10 rares, things like Splinter Twin, Alish Norn, th these are cards that you would never have thought needed to have a proxy, although they're not pennies on the dollar, but they weren't hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, the process is being perfected in China. It is not being regulated by the Chinese market. Shipping is coming into the United States extraordinarily quickly and easily, and people need to know about it. That's why you need to share this video so to let people know. And, you know, my take on how this affects Wizards of the Coast is that what you're going to see is they'll just have to get more aggressive with their own reprints because they're never going to regulate the Chinese market. The Chinese don't care about counterfeits. It's not regulated there. It's never going to be. Um, the idea that you can stop these from coming into the U.S. market at this point is completely gone. Ten years ago, maybe. Five years ago was probably already too late. The fourth and fifth generation uh, proxies I've seen that have come across my desk, and I've done videos about them before, are pretty dang good. When they're in my hand, I know they're fake. But in a double sleeve, I'd never know. And this goes to, you know, not all of the fault is on the counterfeiters, where there's a demand, there's always going to be somebody to meet that demand. There's going to be supply to meet that demand. Many years ago, I really enjoyed kind of the art of people making their own proxies at home, printing them on like transparency sheets and putting them on uh, seventh edition foils that they peeled back. That level of proxy, I 100% support. It's an art form. But what's happening now, as 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 much as uh, as easy it is, as easy it is as it is to have a bit of Schadenfreude and laugh at Wizards of the Coast misfortune now because of long-term greed, in my opinion. Um, I still just because I don't like Wizards of the Coast doesn't mean I don't want Magic the Gathering to thrive. I know it; they are at kind of at odds. Whoops, they are at odds against each other, but. Millions of people love this game. I still love Magic the Gathering. I don't want it to go away. I don't want it to fail. Uh, would I like to see a lot of the political ideologies out of, out of the company? Of course. Would I like to see better card quality uh, coming out of the company? Duh. I've only been saying that for four years. Um, would I like to see fewer cash grab products? Yes, of course. But that doesn't mean I want to see um, the this insane influx of um, proxies. And let's be honest, these aren't proxies. These are counterfeit cards, all right? I'm going to put a clear line of delineation here. When you print a card and you are specifically talking about the core of the paper, blue core, why is blue core important? It's because they're talking about passing the rip test, right? That's why. And you're talking about a full set of Power 9 getting sold for $13. And the fact that you see, oh, it's blue core, two sets of Power 9, plus two sets of dual lands, plus two sets of fetch lands, $13. $13. 
And why, why are they advertising that they're blue core? If, if you're buying these just to use fine, but know that someday you're going to toss them aside or somebody's going to steal your deck or you're going to leave them or you're going to forget that they're counterfeit and they're going to get into the system. It's going to taint everything. Now, as buyers, local game stores have to be better at identifying most fakes. And most local game stores I talk to are pretty good at it. I mean, a jeweler's loop and 30 seconds in training can pretty much get you uh, trained up on these. But when you have this stuff, $70 marked down to $13, here's Black Core. Why you would want Black Core, I'm not sure. But you can see, Great prints, just glossy. Cards came as described. You can see hundreds of people are buying these products. You can just look at the reviews. 100 plus people bought this. 100 plus people bought this. 100 plus people bought this. I mean, what what do you want, Wizards of the Coast? 108 piece blue core counterfeits, $14. How can you compete with this? Of course, I disavow. You can see packages of Verdant Catacombs, just stacks. They're flowing into the market. I don't know how you fix this other than if you're Wizards of the Coast, you probably have to, I don't know, you have to attack and reprint these to make it worthwhile, make it not worthwhile for people to purchase these on the secondary market. But Because make no mistake about it. Yes, there are some people that are buying these proxies uh, just to build decks and have fun, okay? But there are lots of other people who are buying them, who are trading them, who are selling them to local game stores, who are selling them at GPs, who are mailing them into buy lists. You know, you, you take like, you mail in 25 Verdant Catacombs, you know, 15 of them are real, 10 of them are fake, um, just to slip it by. Or you shark a little kid who doesn't know any better. Who, and you're like, hey, this is a verdant catacomb. This is $30. You know, you, you want to trade me for that whatever uh, card you have? It's, it's just bad. Uh, as much as I dislike Wizards of the Coast as a company, this influx of counterfeits is extraordinarily bad for the game. And when you have websites like Wish and many others, AliExpress, you, if you want to buy these counterfeits, they're extraordinarily easy. I mean, some of these things have hundreds of reviews. Think about that. If you have 100 reviews, that probably means thousands of people bought your product, right? What, think about, ask yourself this question. When is the last time you reviewed a product you bought on Amazon? You know what I mean? And I don't know what you do if you're Wizards of the Coast. Do you spend all day and night trying to shut down these websites? I don't think that's a good use of your time. I think you would probably be better off um, putting out a product. And like I've said a million times before, and they're starting to get close to this with like the Guilds of Ravnica premium edition pack and all this crap, is unfortunately, it's going to force Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro to just directly address the secondary market and deal with whatever potential lawsuits might happen. I really think that's the end game here. Or they continue to ignore it. And the card pool, the pool of cards out there, that people are trading for and buying become completely compromised. I mean, already, when you look at shock lands and fetch lands and any card over $20, you've got to have your, you know, you've got to be worried. And they're even counterfeiting the stickers nowadays. Although in a sleeve, it might pass, but it would never pass uh, what you're seeing. You know, it never pass if you actually held the card out of the, uh, out of the sleeve. I think Wizards of the Coast is doing that. I think they should continue to evolve, not just this one hollow, but they should be changing the hollow every year or every two years so that you don't give the Chinese market enough time, you know, and eons. If they, if Wizards uses the same sticker for 10 years, they're going to crack that sticker too. Um, and when you have some modern print, modern day cards printed, you're going to have the same problem with counterfeits down the road. Uh, I don't, I don't, disavow anyone who uses proxies. I just wish people would use them in a way where they were clearly a proxy. Wizards of the Coast could support this too. People used to run proxy tournaments where you'd have set number of proxies that you could print, but or that you could have in your deck, and then they banished that. Wizards stopped that. 
they forbid forbade it. So now it becomes a game of trying to sneak these decks past judges at events, which what judge is going to take every card out of a deck and look for counterfeits? I mean, it's not going to happen. So instead of having some Wizards of the Coast sponsored proxy event or some available proxy cards, um, people are just going to buy them from AliExpress or Wish.com or whatever the hell they want, and everybody loses. I don't know what can be done. I'm curious what you have to say by the comment section down below. Is this just tough break, Wizards of the Coast? We don't care. You do a lot of greedy stuff, so you deserve this. Or or are you more like the human side of where I'm at? Like This really only hurts the player base. This doesn't necessarily hurt Wizards at all because they don't care. Uh, they can't reprint a lot of these. It's not like Wizards of the Coast is making a lot of money off the Power 9, right? So what do they care? It's not really eating into their market. Now, for the modern staples, sure, it does have an effect, but this is very concerning. And, and buyer beware, any of these cards, if you look at some of these lists, you have to look at what they're reprinting. You know, white border dual lands. These are always red flag. The uh, Urza lands, Celestial Colonnade, Maze of Ith, all these has Rishad import, all the shock lands, all the fetch lands. These are all on these lists, and you would do right to educate yourself on the cards that are getting reprinted in these 100 piece sets. 19 bucks, 100. I could buy it right now. What's on here? Let's see. I see all the Moxes. I see Damnation. I see Spellskite. I see Blood Moon, Cryptic Command. I mean, if you look at these, right, you have to look. And you have to start to educate yourself on what is getting re reprinted here or counterfeited. Because if you're going to go out and trade or buy any of these, you have to get good. Deathrite Shaman, I mean, why? Why is that even counterfeit? You know, Voice of Resurgence. These cards aren't even that expensive. Um, also, something to consider is if you're buying something older, you know, foil versions, those seem to be okay right now, uh, for now. But... I don't know. It's just nuts. This is not good, and it's only going to continue to get worse. And I've got another story to cover later today about Hasbro, too. But for now, I just wanted to get that out there. Buyer beware. Counterfeits are getting worse.